Hello everyone and welcome to the second chapter of this series with George Bridgman. Now Bridgman has a complete different approach to the uh, drawing the head than uh, Andrew Loomis. He is using the box form instead of spheres. Instead of uh, starting with a circle, I start with uh, drawing the general shape of the head in straight lines instead of curves as if I'm curving uh, a block of wood. Now even though the way we draw the head in each method differs from one method to the other, the measurement however is always the same. So the measurement here are the eye line in the middle of the head, the brow line and the nose line in equal thirds like we did before. But instead of lines like we did with the Andrew Loomis, we have here a, a plain area for the eyes, like a visor going inward. The jaw lines go a bit toward the ear, then all the way to the chin. There's a slight curve between the chin and the jaw to the ear. So it's like a break in halfway at the nose line and then mirror to the other side. The hairline, like before, is at a third space above the brow line. Finally, the chin, basically a curved box tilted downward. Now notice that the uh, this method have uh, a 3D dimension. There is a front view and a side view. So the side area of the head is flat all the way to the jaw. Then at the cheekbones it starts to curve a little bit toward the chin. The vertical middle line here will, uh, will follow the form under it. So it will go inside with the eye visor then outside with the nose base and the nose base of course is halfway between the brow line and the chin line the eye is going to be in the visor area that we just curved from the face and there is of course one eye in between the nose wings fit under the eyes corner and the mouth is halfway to the eyes. Same rules of the features in the Andrew Loomis method and all the methods that can come after that. The pros in this uh, method that it's easier to curve a box than to draw uh, curved and circles. So it's a bit easier than the other methods. It's not very complicated uh, and Perspective wise, it's easier to do tilted faces and uh, faces uh, in awkward positions because you're dealing with a box, not a sphere. It also helps a lot with the values because you're already uh, drawing the face planes. It's easier to paint light and shadows when you have the planes of the face already put down. As for the cons, uh, the final result might be a bit uh, rigid due to the boxing forms. Also, it's not very dynamic uh, way for sketching faces from imagination. It's a little bit uh, hard edge. When we draw the uh, Bridgman method, we can also use this circle. Of course, it's against the method itself, but if you find it hard to draw uh, the head shape from a box right away, you can start with a circle, divide it, and then turn it to the box form. You can also start with the three thirds, the division we did before the hairline, the brow line, the nose line, and the chin line and the line in the center of the head for the eyes then I draw the eye visor like we discussed before the visor area and we draw the line between the front and the side planes remember it curves a little bit toward the ear on the cheek bone if you want to see where it breaks it's about the nose line so it turns a little bit toward the ear at the nose line level from the brow line to the hairline you have a flat area pointing upward and the chin area pointing half up and half down and on the chin area so half of it pointing up and half of it pointing down the glabula or the nose triangle area on the top of the nose is going inward remember that it goes inward then outward following the nasal bone think of it as a pyramid with two sides centered toward the cheeks when it's all done it's time to smooth your sculpture especially when you are drawing a female there is never a hard edge on the face, so connect between the points with smooth curves. Finally, only thing left now is the detailing part, according to the reference if you're drawing from, uh, from a photo, or to your imagination if you're drawing a character from your imagination.
now I'm mixing things a little bit. So uh, on the front side, I started with the with a box shape instead of a circle. I'm not changing the way that I'm starting the method each time to confuse you, by the way. It's just to show that uh, you have many options, different options to start the same method each time. Divide the shape in both ways, vertical and horizontal. Add the three thirds. Divide the area from the nose to the shin and three as well. Well. And you will have the hairline, brow line, nose line, mid lips, top shin, and the bottom of the shin. Of course, half the head as a whole is the eye line. Now draw the visor with a half eye distance from both sides between the eye and the ear, and one eye in between the two eyes. The flat cranium area on both sides connects to the turning flat shape of the jaw, all the way to the chin breaking as we said at the nose line. Same rules as before. The inner eye corner is lower than the outer line corner. The nose wing stops at the eye corners. And the lips a little bit to the midway of the eyes or a bit shorter. All is left now is detailing and smoothing the hard edges into organic curved smooth forms. The main important feature of this method is drawing the eye visor area. From there you can draw the whole thing, the side flat plane of the cranium circle, the jawline, the shin, and you will be done with the sculpture of the head. Remember, the ear fits between the brow line on the top and the nose line in the bottom. Tilt it slightly on the 30 to 45 degrees angle toward the back half of the head. Don't forget the 30 degree angle from the nose to the chin in the side view. Some faces break this rule by the way, but as always the default rules should be learned first in order to break them later. Just a side note, when you're doing a different views to the same face, be wary of the unique characteristic of the features of the face you're drawing. The length, the height, the width of each element will dictate the personality and the characteristic of the face you're drawing, especially if you want all the views to look as if you're drawing the same person. Now let's draw the portrait. Since I always draw with the Frank Riley or Loomis method, I find it a bit easier to start with Bridgman head with the circle instead of a box, especially if you are not in the front view. So I'm a bit more familiar with it. So I start with a the circle, then I curve the visor and the side plane after setting the right measurement of the three thirds, turning it into a box. Remember that the other side of the jaw is mirrored as well, but don't forget that there is perspective in this view. The left side is a bit narrower than the right side, due to the perspective.
features of the face simply fit in place after all the guidelines are correctly set. This will correct a lot of beginners mistake due to the wrong placement and guesswork. Once the initial placement for the features are drawn, you can relax and enjoy the process of detailing. George Bridgman method is now done and here is the final practice sheet. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one with Bernie Hogarth. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.